Imagine a structure so vast it could crisscross the entire United States from coast to coast. We're talking about the Great Wall of China, a marvel that stretches over 13,000 miles, showcasing the incredible stamina of human engineering. For centuries, this huge barrier has snaked through mountains, deserts, and everything in between, standing tall as a symbol of protection, unity, and perseverance. Despite the common belief, you can't really spot it from space, but that doesn't diminish its magic. Hello and welcome back to DocuFlix. Let's journey together to uncover the facts behind its construction and dive deep into the incredible legacy of this world wonder. The Great Wall isn't just one continuous fortress. Rather, it's a series of walls and fortifications stitched together over time. This fragmented marvel has witnessed more than 2,000 years of history, echoing tales of wars, trade and diplomacy. The origins date back to as early as the 7th century BC, when individual states began erecting barriers against invaders. As dynasties rose and fell, sections were added, removed or rebuilt. By the time of the Ming Dynasty between the 14th and 17th century, the wall we recognize today took a more defined shape. It's no wonder the Chinese name for it, Xiongxiong, means long wall. Stretching over diverse terrains, the wall showcases a stunning narrative of Chinese evolving strategies and architectural prowess. Imagine the countless workers who worked hard under the scorching sun and freezing winters. Their blood, sweat and stories are instilled in each brick. There's a famous saying by Chairman Mao Zedong, He who has not climbed the Great Wall is not a true man. This quote underscores not just the physical journey of climbing it, but also appreciating the profound historical tale it embodies. With every stone, it tells tales of ancient emperors, fierce battles and the relentless march of time. Building on the incredible legacy of the Great Wall's expansive history, let's travel back to its embryonic stages. Before there was the awe-inspiring Long Wall, there was the simpler yet significant Square Wall. Constructed during the Zhao Dynasty around the 8th century BC, this rudimentary defense system served as a precursor to the structure we marvel at today. Different states in ancient China, each with their unique challenges and threats, erected their individual walls, these state walls weren't just barriers against invasions, they were symbols of power, marking territories and safeguarding trade routes. For instance, the state of Qi, facing the threat of the mighty Chu state, built a formidable wall to its south in the 7th century BC. Similarly, the state of Zhao constructed its protective boundary against the powerful state of Yan. Each wall bore witness to intricate tales of politics, warfare and survival in a fragmented China. However, the real game-changer came with the rise of the Qing state. Emerging as one of the dominant forces in the Warring States period, the Qing recognized the constant threat from the nomadic tribes to the north. Their struggles with these fierce horsemen, especially the xiong Nu, are legendary. The initial attempts of diplomacy and trade failed, forcing the Qing to adopt a more aggressive approach. It was during the reign of the first Qing emperor, Qing Shi Huang, in the 3rd century BC that the monumental task of connecting and fortifying the state walls began. This unified defense system was not just a military strategy, but a statement of Qing's dominance and vision. From the square wall to the great unifying wall of the Qing, China's journey in fortification was as much about bricks and boundaries as it was about ambition, foresight and survival. As we venture further into Chinese history, one name resoundingly emerges as the pivot of transformation. Qing Shi Huan. From a fragmented collection of warring states, China experienced its first taste of unity under his reign. The end of the chaotic warring states period in 2021 BC marked the dawn of the Qing dynasty, with Qing Shi Huan claiming the title as China's first emperor. His ambition was vast, only rivaled by his vision for a united China. Rather than celebrating his victory, Qing Shi Huang immediately turned his attention towards monumental projects that would redefine the landscape and soul of China. At the heart of his initiatives lay the colossal project of the Great Wall. It wasn't about merely constructing another barrier. It was about reinforcing the new identity of a unified China. By connecting the fragmented walls built by the earlier states, he aimed to create an impregnable unified defense system that would stand as a testament to his dynasty's might. Each brick in this vast expanse was symbolic of the unity he brought to a previously divided land. 
The connected walls served multiple purposes, from thwarting northern nomadic invasions to acting as a powerful emblem of consolidated strength and territory. While historians and critics have often debated the methods Qing Shi Huan employed in his reign, none can question the audacity and vision behind such a grand endeavor. His decision to integrate various state walls not only provided a practical solution to defense, but also sowed the seeds of the very idea of China as we know it today. As we transition from the vision of Qing Shi Huan, it's essential to delve into the construction intricacies of the very section his dynasty championed. Spanning thousands of miles, the Qing dynasty segment of the wall was a marvel of its time, utilizing a series of locally sourced materials from rammed earth to wood and stone. These choices weren't just based on availability, but on the keen understanding of which materials would best suit a region's topography and climate. It's said that the wall conceals within its belly more than just bricks and mortar. Legends whisper of workers who, having met their end during the wall's construction, were buried within its vastness, turning the structure into a burial chamber of the unnamed and unknown. While evidence to firmly support this claim remains scarce, the story lends an eerie aura to an already monumental edifice. Equally fascinating is the wall's adaptability. The Qing engineers, displaying remarkable ingenuity, modified their construction techniques based on geography. In the vast deserts, they used tamped earth, while in mountainous terrains, they leveraged the strength of stones and bricks. This adaptability wasn't just a testament to their architectural prowess, but also an ode to their undying commitment to the wall's purpose, a unified line of defense. One can't help but marvel at the dual functionality of the wall, which served both as an economic safeguard and a barricade of defense. The stark contrast between China's lush, resource-rich southern Greenlands and the arid, challenging terrains of the north highlighted the nation's wealth gradient. The south, with its abundance, became the heart of Chinese civilization and economic prowess, while the north, with its vast barren expanses, often became the ground for nomadic attacks. It wasn't just about defending territories. The Great Wall played a pivotal role in protecting the economic lifeline and cultural wealth of the Chinese dynasties. With agriculture, trade, and commerce flourishing in the fertile southern regions, it was of paramount importance to shield these areas from northern raids. The wall, in all its grandeur, became the physical manifestation of this protective sentiment. It didn't just shield lands, it guarded the very essence of Chinese culture, from their intricate silk production methods to their deeply rooted philosophical beliefs. By ensuring a clear demarcation and providing a robust line of defense, the Great Wall not only discouraged potential invaders, but also reinforced the sanctity of Chinese economic zones. In doing so, it became more than just a barrier of bricks and stone. It transformed into a symbol of prosperity and cultural continuity for an entire nation. Its creative design and architecture tell another captivating story. Every stone and brick were meticulously placed to form three primary components the main wall, strategically positioned passes, and the ever-watchful signal towers. These weren't randomly placed. They were the products of careful planning and deep understanding of the landscape. Depending on where you stood along the vast stretch of the wall, its design varied to adapt its surroundings. In mountainous regions, it clung to peaks, serving as both a physical and psychological barrier. Where stones were abundant, they became the primary building material whereas in the vast deserts, tamped earth took precedence. This flexibility in design, rooted in the practical use of local resources, showcased the genius behind its architecture. One can't talk about the wall without mentioning its iconic features. The perforated platforms, designed for soldiers to peer out and defend, became the landmark of its defense system. The Pufang, or fortified beacon platforms, with their elevated vantage points, allowed for an extended field of vision. Every design aspect, every structure, served a dual purpose, form fused with function. While exploring the design intricacies of the Great Wall, one can't overlook the vital gateways and passes that punctuated its vast expanse. These weren't just random openings in the wall. Each was a strategic stronghold, carefully positioned to maximize control and defense. Meticulously constructed, these passes played a pivotal role in the functionality of the wall beyond just defense. Trade thrived through the gateways. As merchants and traders navigated the ancient Silk Road, they passed through these checkpoints, ensuring a steady flow of goods, culture, and ideas. 
but these were also pivotal militarily. Soldiers patrolled these areas vigilantly, ensuring the wall wasn't just a barrier, but an active line of defense. If invaders managed to approach, these gateways could be quickly mobilized for swift counterattacks, turning the perceived weak points into hubs of resistance. Each pass had its unique character, defined by its position and purpose. While some were bustling hubs of commerce, others remained silent guards, ever watchful. Together, they ensured that the wall was more than just a static fortification. It was a living, breathing entity, facilitating exchange and safeguarding China's heartland. Despite the sprawling length of the wall, information flowed seamlessly thanks to the pivotal role of the signal towers. These structures stood tall, not just as defensive fortifications, but as crucial communication hubs, ensuring that every stretch of the wall remained alert and interconnected. The methods for relaying messages were both inventive and varied. By day, smoke signals rose in thick columns, visible for miles, conveying alerts or news. By night, fiery torches took the relay, their blazing streaks painting urgent narratives across the dark sky. Additionally, flags waved and drums beat in pre-arranged patterns, each signaling specific messages, from potential threats to mere status updates. These methods, though ancient, were incredibly efficient, enabling messages to traverse significant distances in surprisingly short time spans. Through these communication strategies, the Great Wall was transformed from a static structure to an active, responsive entity, ever vigilant and always in conversation with itself. The Great Wall stands not merely as a monument of bricks and stones, but as a depiction of ancient China's prowess in defense, communication and innovation. As we reflect on its grandeur, we can't help but wonder, what other marvels does history hold that we've yet to truly understand? That's all we have for you today. Remember to hit the like button, spread the word by sharing, and stay tuned to DocuFlix by subscribing for more captivating content. We'll see you next time.